Hello and welcome back to the channel. I just received the latest 12.5 full self-driving supervised update and this is my first drive with it. I haven't um, been posting for a while since most of the updates that did occur, they really didn't make a huge difference. Um, but this one is supposedly taking care of a lot of the regressions in the last version, uh, so we will see how that goes. So first, we don't really have... Just kind of hanging out here with hesitance to start, so I'll just give it a little bit of throttle. All right, here we are. So the last few versions of Full Self Drive were really hugging the right side of the road here almost to the point where it was going, it felt like it was going to run over that little bump and into the grass, but this version seems to have a nice comfortable distance from the right side of the road while still not really moving, protruding too far over into the oncoming traffic lane. First stop sign, a little bit of an aggressive stop here, and again, way early for, whew, it just kind of went for it. Um, I couldn't see any traffic, so it had a ton of confidence there while it was going. Don't know if that was the right move or not, but it definitely went for it. All right, second stop sign, nice smooth stop, much smoother there. And Okay, so first stop sign was stopped at the line, uh, but there was no post-stopping creep behavior. It just sort of gunned it. I had limited visibility to the right, so I'm not entirely certain how well it was able to judge that it was safe to go. I'll have to run that one a few more times to see if I can determine whether or not it actually knew it was safe or it was just going for it. and it's still gonna stop here, and this is a... I'll give it some throttle. That stop sign is only for folks that are driving straight. If you're going to turn to the right, it's not necessary to stop. So it's... It, I'm pretty confident in saying that the addendum signs, things like stop except for right turn and no turn on red, still aren't fully recognized in 12.5. Uh, Have a sharp turn to the left here. Sometimes full self-driving will not, will cut this corner a little bit too wide, but it did a really good job there. Right, traffic to the left is good. We're turning right, stopped at the sign, and that was good. So that stop sign has been much improved. I mean, technically, all three stop signs so far have been much improved. I felt pretty confident with that last one that Vision was able to detect that there was nothing coming to the left and safely go. I really still don't know how I feel about that first stop sign. Turning left here. Excellent.
So far, the vision-based monitoring is has been pretty solid. I've oh, got an odd dry wipe there, which is new. So far, the vision-based monitoring has been pretty darn solid. I don't typically wear uh, sunglasses, so I haven't had any issues with it at all. Uh, I know that in a future update, probably pretty soon, where the city and highway stack are merging together, there is supposed to be a sunglass detection mode that still allows vision-based monitoring to work. I'll have to see how that works. I do have a pair of polarized sunglasses that I can use to test that out. And the stop sign coming up here is a challenging one based on the fact that there are always tractor trailers to the right and storage containers that completely obstruct the ability to see. In fact, when I have to look, I have to look underneath the tractor trailer to see. And it stops and whoop, it's going for it. Solid. Right, went over the white line for really no reason there, but speed was good. Still not fully understanding why in some instances full self-drive will cut the lines where it'll drive over the right line or the left line, solid lines, when there's nothing else around. I could see if there was a vehicle turning and it was you know, being cautious about that vehicle maybe cutting into my lane a little bit, but in that case there was really nothing around and it just hugged the white line and crossed over it uh, with the front tires then the back tires. So I have been taking this route to test the vision's ability to determine if where it's going to drive in the road. There are a good number of manholes that are just kind of right smack dab in the middle or off to the left a little bit that are fairly deep as far as when you hit them, you, you feel it. And generally, once for the last few versions, I knew full self-driving was going to hit them, so I would manually drive this part. So we'll see how 12.5 handles it. So coming up here, they'll be on the left, center to the left. Went straight over that one. And here's one, oh, hit that one pretty good. So I can safely assume here comes another, and another, and another. So I can safely assume that it still does not recognize the manholes in the road therefore would unlikely notice a pothole as well. So in the case of me driving there, I would have moved over slightly to the right or so that I would pass it on the right hand side or I would move closer to the center line and just drive over it. So here we've got some folks working and the road is closed. 
So we'll see what happens here. Um, what would normally happen is I would have bared to the right there to get onto the road. So here, it looks like self-driving is going to, I guess, do what, what any reasonable person would do, and that is go to the light and then make the right. Um, you can see it turning the wheel to avoid the gentleman in the road. That was good. Uh, I was cutting that corner way too close, so I did disengage there. I can't really tell if it was going to clip that curb a little bit, but better safe than sorry. So putting on the turn signal here, not really sure why. Uh, wants to turn there, but that's not correct. It... So it definitely got thrown off its game there, but those are the kind of unexpected occurrences that are going to happen in the real world that it does need to account for. And I do like that it was very quick to make the decision when the road was closed. All right, we're gonna, we should be picking a lane here, not riding the center. So I should be further over to the right here uh, not in both lanes where the little white line splits we'll see if it does it here what should happen is it needs to move over to the right and it's going to go straight up the center so that is a regression generally the vehicle were would bear to the right there and properly so that vehicles could go on on the left side and make that left turn Straight up the center here is good. Then in the past, there is a left, I'm sorry. So in the past, there's a right here, but there is no stop sign. But for whatever reason, self-driving would always want to stop here. And I had to give it a little bit of throttle. It looks like that's going to be the case also. Yep. So no stop sign, but it was just going to stop. This is, we do have the right of way. There's really nothing particularly challenging there as far as there's no traffic coming from the left since it's one way. It just thinks that it needs to stop there. So I always give it a little bit of throttle, just hoping that that interaction will eventually teach it to continue on Uh, and we're getting in the left lane, which is exactly what I would do since on the right lane, a lot of folks are always turning up and you're, it's a constant stop and go. In this case, there isn't a whole bunch of traffic, but that's what normally happens there. So the left lane is definitely the place to be. Now, hopefully it stays here as the right lane has the same problem that the road that I was just on has, and that is that there are manholes everywhere, deep ones that really hit pretty hard whenever you're driving 35 to 45 miles per hour on this road. As I was saying earlier, there was a definite improvement with how close it got to the curb on that last right turn. Generally, if it were going to stop and I gave a little throttle, it would really cut that corner close when it was driving to the right to the point where I would disengage because of my comfort level. And 
and I'm very happy about this. This is exactly what I would have done. And I know that it's difficult because you don't really want to drive full self-driving on how you drive, but how it performs in general. But in this case, avoiding those manholes on the right-hand side uh, just makes me a happier person. Um, I feel like it's way just just in general most folks drive in this lane and you only get in the right lane if you're going to turn into one of the establishments or back further there's a residential area and otherwise to avoid most of those little dips in the road folks will stay in this lane so hopefully that that behavior stays and if I take this route multiple times it'll continue to do that. I do like the stop and go behaviors. It feels much smoother and it feels like it gets on the friction brake a lot less when it's approaching a red light. Um, when in all prior versions, it would speed up between lights and then very quickly slow down again. And it was definitely using the friction brakes instead of the regen. In this case, I can say that it seems to be using just regen and even when it accelerates up a little bit it will just let off the throttle much sooner good turn there it's not necessary to stop here which it doesn't and that's good and then it's going to turn in here Maybe. Yep. And wow, it's really going to the right here. I'm sorry, it's really going to the left here and it pulls into a space question mark. Um, huh. So I'll get a quick view here. Uh, Looks like it intended to pull into a space. Um, it's kind of riding the line there. Don't know if there were other cars in the lot or not, if that would have changed where it positioned, but that's interesting. I do wish that this was on the main display because as the scroll wheels are fine for picking a space, but I just feel like it would be infinitely more user-friendly as opposed to scrolling through all of the available slots that I could simply touch the one that I wanted. No surprise here, Vision is, Vision parking has been pretty rock solid for quite a few versions now. Really happy with the shifting improvements. That is how quickly it will shift from drive to reverse when pulling back. It felt like in earlier versions that if I was by myself, it would be fine. But if there was vehicles behind me, waiting to park and they had some level of impatience they would not take kindly to how long it would take the vehicle to shift when it was positioning itself
another difficult stop sign with low visibility to the right. I don't see anything. It's pulling out somewhat cautiously, but I can definitely say that stop sign behaviors are drastically improved from the versions prior. Here is a no turn on red that since it didn't read the right turn stop sign, I don't think it's gonna respond here and it is, it's going to go. So I'll just disengage. So far, I know there's been a lot of mixed reviews of the automatic speed on version 12.5 and so far for me it's been pretty good. Uh, acceleration has been brisk but not crazy fast. It doesn't really shoot, jump off the line and braking has been so much better. It actually feels like it's looking further ahead and letting off of the accelerator when I would naturally do it in order to not get to the point where I'm right up on the traffic in front of me and then I have to apply the physical brake. This road has a couple of yellow light. We're gonna go right through it. There's a red light here that we'll, looks like we'll stop at. So that was good. It didn't slam the brakes on for that yellow light and we went through it no problem. And it slowed down nicely for this next red light. So Definitely going to say after the stop signs and red lights that I've interacted with so far that that behavior is darn near perfect and I'm hoping that as the next updates come out that that doesn't become a regression because that is very comfortable. So it's just started to let off the accelerator here and honestly, prior to this, it would have been right around here where it started to decelerate and apply the friction brakes. So that is so much better. And I feel like I'm not going to have to replace the brakes every two years now because it's using the friction brakes so much. little bit of friction braking there. Also maintain the speed throughout in this entire road has a series of routes that are, could also be mistaken for speed limit signs. And it has done that in the past where Route 40, it would see that as a 40 mile per hour speed limit or 20, it would drop down to 20 miles per hour. So it's done a really good job at ignoring those signs and only adhering to the speed limit signs so far.
I don't know if this translates to video, but I also like how it allows the vehicle in front to accelerate and doesn't try to match its speed. It lets it pull ahead a little bit so that they can put some distance between the two vehicles. On 12.3.6, it would accelerate right along with, and in some cases, a little bit faster than the lead vehicle. And if they did anything as far as slowing down, it would then have to jam on the brakes. So it's nice that it allowed it to put some distance between me and the car in front. So here it needs to bear to the right to get into the straight and turn lane as opposed to the left only lane in which it did. So it didn't do what it did at the intersection earlier and that was split the difference of the lines. It's kind of jam pumping the brakes or the Excel letting off the hold a little bit odd there, but and same behavior here where it's allowing the vehicle in front to pull ahead a little bit before it fully accelerates. Really, that's that's new behavior, and I really like that. I've had plenty of instances where full self-driving made me kind of nervous because it would just accelerate at the match the speed of the vehicle in front or go a little faster. And any sudden movement or stop would cause my car to, to really break hard. So I really appreciate that change. And another one I hope doesn't have a regression with future updates. So normally around here, it will read that school sign and drop its speed way down. And it didn't for the first time in I don't know how long. It did drop to 25, which I'll have to go back and check the tape there. I don't know that there's a physical sign that states it's 25, but it's staying at a reasonable speed. So normally through this entire area, I have to press on the accelerator to get it to go all the way to this speed limit sign, which is 40. And then I can let off the accelerator, but I haven't interacted with it at all during this drive. So that's, that's awesome. interesting that it's able to detect when I'm checking my mirrors and when I look down briefly at my watch and got to pay attention to the road. Uh, so it, the in-cabin monitoring definitely seems to be pretty accurate. Nice gradual slowdown. It might be just a little bit slow. But overall, not bad. Coming up to another stop sign, which the vehicle doesn't need to stop if it's turning right, which in which case I'm doing, and I'm going to have to press the accelerator to go through, so... And again, it cuts that white line a little bit on just, it seems to be just 
on this road and, and one other one where the vehicle goes over the white line to the right where both my tires cross and there's just no reason to even hug that line when there's no vehicles at all anywhere present coming past in front of me, coming around the bend. Um, so there's not really a good reason why it was hugging that line. It had plenty of room. So not sure why it did that. It kind of did it before. And so this is a new, this is a regression here. It normally continues through this without stopping and there's no stop sign at all. It was just coming to a stop there. I had to give it a little bit of accelerator to get it to go through there. So that was one step back. But prior to this 12.3.6 and 12.4.3 both hugged the line but didn't cross it. And in this case it crossed it and it was just you could see if there was another vehicle in the road, maybe they were cutting their turn a little bit into my lane and it forced the car over. But when it's completely clear road, it's just an unusual thing. My infamous fork in the road bare left is here, um, which has about a 2% success rate of ever actually making this left. So we'll see how it handles it here. Turn signal on, it's slowing down. I will be absolutely amazed if it can do this. Oh my gosh. It actually did it. Wow. Huh. If it can consistently do that every trip, I will be blown away because that's the first time it did it reasonably uh, as opposed to almost running into the grass or doing it in such a way that it was just it barely made it like that was almost perfect it might have been a little far to the left there was no other vehicles coming down the in, down through that fork so wasn't a big deal i'm interested to see how it's going to act if there's a vehicle coming the other way if it'll still perform as well and just stay more to its side but very very happy with that so this is the part where i normally rate my drive and has gone everywhere from pretty darn good to a mixed bag this is almost perfect i am thoroughly impressed with this i think i might be more impressed that it's just a regular 12.5 update and not another point release so if 12.5 is projected to go wide around the dot three iteration so if that is indeed the case and there's more improvements than there are regressions there's some serious progress being made here so i have to say that you know if i if i had to sum it up in one sentence i would say this is more like it i am blown away with how smooth the entire drive was normally it can do maneuvers it just there's a difference between the vehicle performing the maneuver and the vehicle actually driving. And a lot of the maneuvers it was able to make prior, it did in a stuttery way. And in this case, it was just unbelievably smooth throughout. I really try on all of my drives to give truly honest opinions of everything. And I don't really want to sound like so generic when it comes to something being awesome, but it it truly was. I am truly blown away. So I, uh, I'm excited for everyone, including the Hardware 3 folks, to get a hold of this update. And if it drives anything like it does on my Hardware 4 vehicle, there's going to be a lot of happy folks out there. I will keep running routes and keep testing. And if I see anything that's either truly unbelievable, <laughs> either good or bad, I'll make sure that I get it documented on video and post another one up for you guys. So I appreciate everyone stopping by the channel and I will see you in the next video.